Chronic disease, cancer, heart disease, and diabetes are the leading cause of death and disability in the U.S. Here in Washington State, it's estimated the economic impact of chronic disease is more than $23 billion annually. And without some major changes, that figure is expected to jump to $80 billion a year by 2023. Former U.S. Surgeon General Richard Carmona is spearheading a national organization called the Partnership to Fight Chronic Disease to get a handle on those rising costs. He's come to Seattle to launch the Washington chapter of that organization, and he joins me now to discuss this effort. Well, when we talk about chronic disease, we're talking about heart disease, we're talking about cancer and um, diabetes. Um, Beyond that, are there other diseases that, you know, f fall into this category? There are. Pulmonary disease, uh, and in fact, mental health, that's one that's often overlooked. And mental health is a big problem in the United States as well as in Washington. And uh, mental health is the one probably that gets <coughs> overlooked the most. Often. Often gets overlooked. Be, you know, we've chosen as a society not really to deal with this. We've marginalized it. We stigmatize people who have mental health problems. But it's a very real problem that we need to deal with. So. Why have you become a part of this effort and, and really how can you get a handle on the cost? Well, the reason that I became involved in this, Enrique, is when I left office as Surgeon General of the United States, I had a lot of opportunities. This organization was just starting and I looked to see what they were doing and in fact they were doing the same things I did as Surgeon General to uh, attempt to address the issues of health and safety of security of the United States. Uh, chronic disease is a major problem in the United States. We spend about two and a half trillion dollars a year on health care. Seventy-five cents of every dollar we spend is on a chronic disease. Do we really understand that? Does the public really understand what a chronic disease is and what it really means to the cost of health care? I don't think so. I think that there's still a literacy gap and we talk about health literacy that even educated people don't understand how their everyday behaviors and decisions contribute to their health status. That smoking can cause problems, that eating the wrong foods, that being, being sedentary, that leads to a, a whole host of health problems. All of those things are within our control, but people don't think about them. You know, so much of our medicine in this country is really uh, kind of after the fact. It is. You find out that you're ill with something, cancer, that you have diabetes. Um, I know people that have had heart attacks and they didn't know that they had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes until after the fact. Is that the problem? That's part of the problem, Enrique. In fact, we, we have a sick care system. We don't have a health care system. We have a system that's perversely incentivized. Our health professionals, who are great people, make a living by waiting for us to get sick. And then they get paid. You get better for a little while. Then you go back and continue those bad behaviors, and you come back again. We need to change the system radically. We need to embrace health and wellness through prevention strategies. We need to fund our providers and provide incentives, economic incentives, so that doctors and nurses and others work to keep us healthy rather than waiting till we get sick, as you said, and putting all the money at the end. We need to move the money to the other end of the system. You know, I've heard people like you say this constantly. Others have said this as well. We never seem to do it. I don't think we have a choice now, Enrique. The cost of health care is astronomical. The average person can't afford health care anymore. Big companies are going out of business or decreasing their benefits because they can't afford health care. If we look to the future within the next decade, our health care expenditures will go up to over 20% of our gross domestic product, which will be over $4 trillion a year. The legacy we're about to leave our children is unsustainable because of chronic disease and economic burden of chronic disease. We must act now. The Obama administration says that it really wants to make some changes in health care. We are uh, at a different time and place from the Clinton administration, which tried to take it on, um, was not very open about it, and, and that was probably part of the downfall yes. of that. Now, uh, the administration, and maybe because of the recession and everything else is going on, seems like they have a better opportunity, but can that really happen? Is there the political will beyond the administration to do this? Yeah. Well, I think starting with the president, he's made a commitment, and it appears that he is genuinely interested, and he's talking about transparency because he sees the problems that occurred when the Clintons tried to move this forward in more of a secretive fashion. So transparency is the hallmark for what he's trying to do. Stimulus money is heading in that direction as well. So I think there's a commitment and I think on the Hill we see the right discussions con, uh, going forward now. That everybody recognizes we need to transform our health care system. We need to address the chronic disease burden and the economic burden just like Partnership for Chronic Disease is doing. However, the devil's going to be in the details. How do you do that? Who pays for it? What kind of a system do we end up with? 
Our partnership basically says, let's continue that debate, but make sure you address these issues of chronic disease because that's what's costing us the most and robbing people of quality of years, of life. But do you see insurance companies and uh, the medical establishment willing to really make some changes and to agree to reform? Well, I think at this point they're all willing to sit down and talk, but they see the world through their own lens. And the real issue is how can we align all of these incentives appropriately so that we can come up with a system that best supports the citizen and we're going to all have to uh, subordinate some of our own self-interest to make sure this system works optimally for the patient. What do you think can be done, I guess, in a short amount of time? Uh, I don't see this as being something that can be uh, changed or regulated or adjusted uh, in, in a year or two. It no. seems like it's going to. But I guess within the next couple of years, what could be done? Well, I agree with you. I think that we're not going to see a single sweeping legislation that's going to save us all. I think that we're going to see incremental change over time. And what I mean by that that is, for example, some of the things we're doing with the Partnership to Fight Chronic Disease, identifying those chronic diseases that add preventable disease burden and economic burden, making sure that everybody understands there's a link with their behavioral choices and their health. You should never smoke. You should get some exercise every day. You should be able to eat healthy every day. If we eliminated tobacco from society, you'd eliminate 80% of lung cancers. Okay? If you took healthy steps every day, ate healthy and reduced minimal the risk in your life, what you'd have is 40% of cancers could go away over time. So I think what we need to do is like what we're advocating in the Partnership to Fight Chronic Disease. Identify some of these risks and start moving incrementally. We don't need government to tell us to do that. We don't need legislation. We can start the incremental change of our nation to a healthier nation and it allows us to live better years at lower cost. All right, Dr. Richard Carmona, thank you very much for your time and we will see what direction and what we manage uh, to get done. Thanks, Enrique. All right.